So for starters, I do want to make one clarification as a follow-up to our first session vis-a-vis uh, -vis political yard signs. So during our first webinar, I mentioned that if you live on base, you cannot have a partisan political yard sign or other signage at your residence. And we've gotten updated guidance that confirms that prohibition does not apply to private residences off base. So if you live in purely civilian housing, not affiliated with the military, you are allowed to have political yard signs at your house. Woohoo! The next question we had had to do with political partisan signage on a private vehicle. So the rule that exists is that a service member cannot have partisan political signage on their private vehicle uh, unless it's a bumper sticker. That's the one exception to the rule. So if you're a spouse, you own a car that your service member does not drive, you can have partisan political signage. You just have to be careful that if your service member drives the car or co-owns the car, uh, having more than just a bumper sticker might get them in trouble. Now, during our session, someone asked, what if you live on base? Uh, and here's what I'll say to that. If you live on base and you are parking your private vehicle in front of your residence, there's a chance that car will be misunderstood as belonging to your service member, whether it does or not. And so if you do have particle, partisan political signage other than a bumper sticker on your car, uh, you do run that risk. And so I would generally advise probably best to avoid if you live on base. We had a question asking whether a non-military spouse or family member can wear partisan political clothing, like say a t-shirt saying vote for so-and-so uh, when they're on base. Now, there's no language in the directives that we talk about on this training uh, that refers to clothing or paraphernalia. So if you're a non-military spouse and you want to wear a shirt like that, uh, I don't see any language in there that someone could use to fault you for. And unlike, say, a shared vehicle or a shared residence, uh, if you're wearing it on your body, the distinction between you and your spouse is easier to point out than others. Uh, so in general, I would say you're good to go. Just be aware if any facilities on base have their own rules. Let's say there's a, um, a social club on base. They may have made their own facility specific rules. Just pay attention to that uh, and that you should be good. We also got a question about whether a spouse can use vulgar language uh, in reference to a political person while on base. I think the context of the question was when it was in a sign or, or a poster on the vehicle. This was a tough question to answer because the primary two directives that we operate off for partisan political activity and protest demonstrations don't make reference uh, to vulgar language in posters. However, I do know that there are parts of the UCMJ that refer to conduct unbecoming or using offensive language toward uh, a list of leaders in the, in the article. Uh, all of which is to say, because those rules seem to be squishier and, and allow for more leeway in what can be prosecuted, I would just in general, I think it's a good rule of thumb to avoid, especially if you're posting something somewhere uh, like your vehicle or your residence, such that your expression may be misunderstood as coming from your service member, I'd advise best to avoid. We were asked if spouses or family members can participate in protest demonstrations on base. Uh, and in short, the answer is yes, but there are some guidelines you have to stick by. So DOD Directive 1325-6 says that any demonstration on posts cannot interfere with work, official duties being uh, taken, happening, uh, and the activities cannot endanger loyalty or morale. Um, and so just be aware that those are the rules that exist that someone would, who wants to scrutinize your activities would use to measure them. Uh, I think one possible option is to seek official permission for uh, a, an event in order to get official guidelines that might be protective. Uh, that would be a good strategy. But yes, they are allowed. One caveat to that is if you're stationed overseas, the SOFA or status of forces agreements between the United States and the host country may specify further regulations. So for instance, 
I know the legal office in Germany has given more specific guidance. So if you're stationed overseas and you're interested in participating in an on-post demonstration, chances are you're not supposed to, but best to check your country-specific SOFA just to make sure. Someone brought up uh, reservists slash National Guard and whether the rules that we talk about apply similarly or different to spouses and family members of reservists. And I'm really grateful that someone brought this up. Uh, apologies, I didn't have a great clear answer at the beginning. Uh, but in short, the rules that we talk about do in fact apply to members of the United States Reserves and National Guard. Um, the language is included in the directives to expand it to, to apply. Uh, and this goes whether or not your reservist is currently activated or not. As long as they're in the reserves, even if they're not on duty in this moment, uh, the rules still apply. Um, so the good news is that for simplicity's sake, if you're a reservist spouse or family member, you can listen to a lot of the materials that we've shared and all of them should apply to you. Now, there are some differences between reserve National Guard and active duty, but those differences don't kick in until your service member runs for office themselves. Then there are some allowances that exist for reserve and National Guard that don't for active duty. In fact, there are members of Congress that are still reservists and National Guardists. Um, but like I've said in other directions, running for office is the place where SFI's expertise ends and someone else's begins. So if your service member is interested in running for office, I'd strongly recommend they connect with someone like Veterans Campaign or even Homefront Rising that might be able to point you in the right direction. We received several questions about speaking out while also being a leadership spouse. And we fully recognize that being in that position complicates the issue a bit about whether it is appropriate and when it's appropriate to speak out. The most important thing to remember is that whether you're in a, an official leadership role like a key spouse, ombudsman, or FRG, or an unofficial, like the spouse of a commander, um, you need to always speak as you the person and not you the leadership role. So be very, very clear what, when it's on social media or your Twitter or your Instagram or in person that you are speaking as yourself and yourself alone. We did a deep dive into the key spouse um, training to see if there's anything specific regarding um, speaking out and political issues. And what we found is that there is a, spe a very specific guidance that you may not use your key spouse platform to endorse a politician. You can't even use it to endorse a product. So it's very clear that when you're speaking, you need to be speaking for, for you, the person, and not the position. Of course, while there's nothing in writing prohibiting you from doing this, as Sarah says, there are some more squishy issues about it. You don't want to alienate people. Of course, as a leader, you want to be inclusive and bring in as many people as possible. So it's always weighing the risk of alienating people versus being true to yourself. One thing I always keep in mind is the idea that silence is complicity. And if there is something that is so disturbing or offensive to you and your morals, that it is worth speaking out. Um, because being quiet simply means that you're not speaking on something that is so important. While you may risk alienating people, on the flip side, it's possible that you may draw in people who would otherwise not have felt welcome. Just by seeing you take a stand on something that's also important to them, they may find a place in your group or with you that they wouldn't have otherwise considered a safe space. If you're a leadership spouse and you would like to speak to someone one-on-one -on -one or a little bit more in depth about these issues, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to connect you with a mentor of sorts who really knows the ins and outs and has been there and done that. And if you'd like to serve as a mentor to a current leadership spouse or someone in one of these tricky positions, reach out to us. If she doesn't speak to it, I'm curious how we can get involved in politics if we don't currently live in the U.S., uh, which is a great question. Kate and I have both talked about this because, um, you know, Kate has uh, lived, spent 10 years of her military spousehood living abroad. And there have been times, Kate has told the story a few times, there have been moments where she really wanted to get involved and she tried to join organizations or campaigns from abroad and found it really difficult to do sometimes because they don't have absentee voting overseas living military spouses in mind most often. Um, I know that Kate has gotten to get involved by writing postcards, which is a nice thing that you could do from anywhere in the world. You don't have to be awake at the same time as someone in a different time zone like you do for, say, text banking or phone banking. Um, 
So if the question is trying to get at practically what are things that you could do while you're currently living that you don't currently live in the United States, uh, the answer is we're actually going to be try and helpful with that. So if you if there's a campaign that you want to get involved with or an organization and it's become difficult, uh, we might be able to put you in touch. But uh, if what you're talking about is legally feasibly, um, a lot of these same rules that we talked about tonight will apply to you, even if you're stationed overseas. And any more specifics will likely come from that uh, status of forces agreement or SOFA that I mentioned. Um, and so the best bet is to read the specifics for your country and reach out to us if you have questions. Uh, if, if let's say you are in Germany right now and you want more specifics, give us an email or shoot us a call and we might be able to get more information for you to be helpful. How do we start conversations with mill spouses and families about politics? Whew. Yeah, how do you kind of broach the subject to see um, what things are like? I mean, there are a number of ways you can do it. Uh, I like to start by using a lot of I language. So I'll, so for instance, just earlier today, I went to downtown Arlington and I joined a peaceful protest. So let's say I'm catching up with some of my military spouse friends and I said, hey, guess what I did the other day? I did this. Um, what do you guys think? Or just pausing and letting things get awkwardly silent to see what folks respond with. Uh, that might be a good way to kind of breach the conversation. Um, I know some people will wear t-shirts or other paraphernalia that will subtly indicate uh, an opinion or value they may have and, and see how people respond to their shirt. <laughs> uh, that's another way to do it. Um, yeah, I think the willingness to, to ask a question, to express that you're asking it, you know, out of earn, an earnest want and desire to have open conversations with people, even if you disagree, um, being upfront about welcoming that, I think, uh, I think a lot of people look for that authenticity and appreciate it when you get real, um, and we'll probably reward you for that. New question, how do the rules differ for spouses who are also employed by the DOD? Yeah, that's an entirely other beast um, because if you're employed by the DOD, that means that all of a sudden there's a set of rules that do apply to you and to your activities. And, 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 I'll, be, and I'll be honest, I'm not, a, I'm not a specialist in what all of those are, so I don't wanna give you incomplete or inaccurate advice. Um, I'd recommend if you have any, well, there, there's plenty you can read about whatever guidelines apply to you. And if you ever have a question and you need guidance, feel free to reach out to your installation's legal office. Anyone you work with, I'm sure that they can uh, help bring you clarity. And again, we don't mind being researchers. We just haven't done all of the research uh, that exists ahead of time. Can non-military people join these webinars? Yes, they can. Um, yeah, because almost everyone has some sort of military connection, uh, and it, it's often a connection that motivates them to want to get involved in something. So, for instance, my mom joined one of our events, even though her only connection to the military is her son-in-law, but uh, she still got a lot out of it. And so, yes, we, we do encourage uh, non-military folks to join. Obviously, some topics are more applicable than others to non-military audience, but we welcome all, all comers. I've seen people being, sorry, this is the question, not me. <laughs> I've seen people being concerned about donating to social movements and how that could reflect onto these service members' security clearance. Any guidance or advice here? Um, it is perfectly allowed. So again, not only can a uniformed service member donate to a political partisan cause or candidate, they can also donate to a nonprofit or you know another entity as long as they are not uh, a terrorist organization or uh, I mean that's the sort of thing that would pop up on a security clearance but a social movement is not something that is prohibited and is not something that is going to prohibit them from getting their security clearance. So for instance if you wanted to donate to any of the organizations 
that the Black Lives Matter movement has been posting about lately, like bail funds or other advocacy organizations that fight racism in the United States, all of those would be acceptable uh, places to donate. Ooh, question in the Q&A about can you do a voter drive on base? Great question, yes you can. Uh, actively encouraging people to vote, completely acceptable. On base, as a spouse, you name it. Even, even a, a service member is allowed to encourage uh, someone else in the military to vote. Um, the one thing I'll add, if you do a voter registration drive on base, just make sure that you're, it's not, there's no signage or connection to a candidate or, or um, a, a partisan candidate or party, because then that wouldn't be allowed. Does that make sense? So you can do it as long as it's in a nonpartisan context. And you can't, and obviously there are rules about, you know, you can't ask someone who they would vote for before you let them register. There are things like that you have to keep in mind, but that's something you have to keep in mind even if you're off the base. Uh, so hopefully folks already know that. <laughs> 